Okay, we're going to have a talk about terminal voltage. So we have learned at this point that if I have a battery like this and a circuit with resistors, let's do a simple series circuit. We have gains on that circuit, which are the cells. In this case, I have two cells, which make up a battery. Anything more than one cell will make up a battery. And I've got three resistors in series. In series meaning that the electrons have to go through that resistor. There's no choice. I'm going to call this one an internal resistor because in this circuit, I'm going to include that resistor inside the battery. So here I'm putting a dashed line around to indicate that I have a battery. Not unlike a AA battery or a D-cell battery. Inside that battery there is some resistance. Now, that resistance will be a drop, a V-drop, a potential drop. We have a certain amount of potential, which is a potential energy per unit charge put out by this voltage here. So that much potential and this will be a potential drop. It will take away some of the potential energy of the electrons. And there'll be some left over for these two guys. So we have the loop rule, which is applicable in any circuit for every loop, that the sum of the V gains equals the sum of the V drops. Looks a lot like an energy conservation equation. So in this circuit, there is one V gain, and there's a V drop here, which I'll call V1. There's a V drop here, V2, and there's a V drop here, which I'll call V drop internal. So we have three drops and one gain. Now, if I want to talk about a terminal voltage, I'm interested in talking about the voltage or potential that is left over after everything that happens inside of the battery has been considered. So in this loop rule that we have here, this takes place inside the battery, and so does this. So if I get those on the same side of the equation, so Vg minus the internal, which is a drop, it's even clear that it is a drop by that subtraction, equals the sum of the two other voltages. This is what we call the terminal voltage. It's referred to as V terminal on your formula sheet, and the formula they give you looks different than this. They give you the following. V terminal equals epsilon plus or minus I R. This equation describes V terminal, but its understanding looks a little different. You do need to understand how I developed this right here. This E stands for EMF, or electromotive force the push on the electrons. This I is the total current. It is the current which goes through the battery. The battery is always in series and the full current is going through it. This battery is in series and the full current is going through it. Uh, internal resistance is this resistor right here. So this, if I subtract, I choose the subtraction I get this, this same equation right here, the same understanding. There is also a plus sign here. That plus sign is when there's a charging taking place. But it is not important that you, un, not important that you understand where this equation, or try, how to apply this equation right off the formula sheet. It's rather important that you know the meaning of the components of completing any loop in any circuit. 
We'll look at an example now that shows us where the plus comes from. It's going to happen right out of the loop rule. You don't have to worry about remembering this equation. You need to worry about remembering Kirchhoff's law, which is the loop rule. And you apply that loop rule and you can discover all of the things you need to discover more or less. Okay, so our next example. looks like this. Okay, so we have here two batteries which again I will surround in a hyphenated line. Each battery is made up of two cells, that's what these symbols indicate. The short line is the negative. So what you, we can see by looking at this, the short line here indicating the negative, that this battery is pointing one direction, this battery is working in the opposite direction. The lines should more or less be the same size. I, it, it, this is shorter than that, so that's our negative right there. Now if I make this one, say, 88 volts, and I make this one, say, 14 volts, then what we have here is this battery ends up being more powerful than that battery. This battery behaves like a voltage drop because it's pushing against this. Now if we're going to figure out uh, what's going on in this system, we use the loop rule like we've always used the loop rule. So I'm just going to make up some numbers here. 1 ohm, 5 ohms, uh, 2 ohms, 6 ohms, 12 ohms, and 4 ohms. This may look something like something like the, the question you have in one of your assignments. Now I'm just going to go straight after trying to figure out what the terminal voltage is here and the terminal voltage here. So I would like to find the V terminal voltage for the 88 volter. So that is this one. This is the one I'm going to go after first. Now I may not be able to solve it first. We'll see what happens with the algebra. So we have here uh, I have 1, 2, and 3 possible pathways for electrons to follow. So 3 possible loop rules. What I'm going to do to turn this into one loop rule is I'm going to take all of these resistances, which are in parallel, and I'm going to turn them into one resistor. And I will redraw the circuit. So just this parallel component, the total resistance there is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 4 and invert. This is looking for a common denominator. This has a common denominator of 12. This is 2 twelfths, 1 twelfth, and 3 twelfths. 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 3 again is 6 all over 12 is 6 over 12, flip that over is 12 over 6, this equals 2 ohms. So now I can redraw this circuit to look like this. Again, I will hyphenate the batteries just to indicate that that resistor is in with the battery. And this here now is a 2 ohm resistor. Got a 1 ohm resistor there, 2 ohm resistor there, 5 ohm resistor there. Now a loop rule. Okay, a loop rule 
here we have one single loop, and this is what it looks like. We have the sum of the V gains equals the sum of the V drops on the, any loop. The loop that we're examining is this loop right here, where our gain is 88 volts. Then there's a drop minus V1 ohm. This is the symbol, sorry, equals our drops. There's a 1 ohm, there's a drop there, V5 ohm, and then we have another 2 ohm, or 2 ohm. This is also a drop. It's a drop because it is taking away from the main flow. The electrons will flow clockwise in this system because this 14 isn't big enough to push it back the opposite direction. So we're going to state that this is a drop then, so that is a 14 volt drop, and we have this other 2 ohm. I'm going to put a prime on there to indicate it's not the same as the first 2 ohm that I've listed. And now I would like to find the terminal. So in order to do that, I am going to realize that this is an internal drop right here for this 88 volt battery. So my V terminal then for the 88 is going to equal 88 volts minus that voltage inside V1 ohm. That's going to equal V through the 5 ohm plus V through the 2 ohm and 14 volts plus V through the 2 ohm prime. Now I can't solve this right here because I don't have all the information, so the next thing I need to do is do another substitution. If I have too many unknowns, I need another equation. The other equation I'm going to be using is a substitution of I times R. So I have 88 minus, I'm going to drop this unit off now, 88 I through the 1 ohm. All of the current goes through the 1 ohm. Incidentally, all of the current goes through all of these. So I can rewrite this equation to be IT times the 1 ohm, well it's 1, equals IT times the 5 ohm. This is I times R. For each one of these, I times R, IT times 2, 14, dropping the units again, plus and it times that 2 ohm. Now I can look at this equation right now and I can realize that I'm not going to be able to solve for this side without moving that IT around and moving it back afterwards. So let's solve for my total current. So moving that back now, I have 88. I will subtract over that 14, minusing 14 from both sides. I will put this I total times 1 on the other side, and I've got a series of other ones here. So I'm just going to factor out that IT from these three, and from that 1, which I've moved back, and it's going to be 1 then, plus 5, plus 2, and plus 2 again. So my I total now equals 88 minus 14, which is 74, divided by this 6 plus 4, which is 10. So my I total equals 7.4 amps. Okay, so again, I did a loop rule. I then took one of the V drops to the opposite side just to indicate to you what exactly the V terminal was. So there it is. That's what I'm looking for. It's my goal right now. When I substituted in my I times R for each one of these locations, I found that I needed to isolate my IT in order to continue. So I moved this IT times its 1 ohm resistor to the side where it came from initially. I subtracted the 14 volt over to the other side since I knew what it was and I factored out my IT from each of the resistances. Added those resistances together. On the other side I had 74 
and now I divide by 